Hello and welcome to the Arena Sports Show. My name is Claire Grayson Fanza. And while today we're going to start off the show a little bit different, not of course from our usual centre line, but we're going to go a bit offside. I know being offside is a bit of a touchy conversation in the DSTV Premiership in South Africa currently, uh, but do allow me on this one. So I've got a question for my panel. I've got Cesar Mabeno with me. We've got, of course, a top defender, top human being, Morgan Gould is with us. And of course, um, sports journalist in Mahlati Mpahlele. So gentlemen, how are we starting off the show, right? We'll start with you, Mahlati because you've got, of course, the, the oldest career from, from, from the three. <laughs> I know so. The question, right? <laughs> the question then is, what shocked you, right, when you got into your workspace? What is the one thing that when you got into this dream and you thought, okay, yes, I'm living the dream, but something that you didn't expect, and it, it, it shocked you a little bit. What is that? Well, it was a long time ago, um, what, uh, 99, 2000. Uh, the newsroom, when I go to the Petrol News, it was very white and Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, too many white people in the newsroom. Um, and to a large extent, I, I don't think that they were prepared to sort of welcome this group of young black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we only just had dreams, you know. Um, and sometimes it was a bit difficult. Uh, some of the people, not, not all of them, I must say, they did their best to frustrate us so that we can get out of the newsroom, but it was the only thing that we had. So we, mm -hmm. it's either we, we stood in there, we fought, uh, and that, in, 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 in a way, uh, forced us to learn quick. Uh, we learned very quick, and you know, um, as they say, the rest is history. Almost, what, more than 20 years, we're still here. So yeah, that was my, that was my, 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 my sort of my first major shock I, I, I encountered. All right, Mabena. Um, you know how in sports, when you're the rookie coming in, mm -hmm. um, whether you're in high school, the first cricket team or the first soccer team, you get treated a certain way. Yeah. And when I came into the industry, I found it was the same as well. I remember going up, back in the day, we used to go up to the change rooms as commentators, mm -hmm. to go knock on the doors, and whoever pops up at the door of the change room, mm -hmm. you the team list, I'm with SABC, right? Yeah. So I go for the, uh, we're doing a Cosmos um, a Pirates game, mm -hmm. knock on the door, and guess who opens the door? Mm -hmm. Hey. So I'm like, I'm watching my team list, uh -huh. like commentator for SBC, uh -huh. and he looks at me. I'm, I'm sure he's thinking, Ellen Dwani, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not saying anything. He pirates in Ali. Yes. I know you didn't come here, you didn't come here for two Cosmos. You came here for Pirates by us and by. I'm thinking, okay. Um, uh -huh. But later on, great friends. Still now, great. We have a great relationship, not too. Um, Peter was saying, "Man, same here. Go up to him, and um, different game." And I'm saying, "Ah, Peter, just want to check." Uh, are there any players that super sport injured between your last press conference today? Turns around and looks at me and goes, um, you want me to do your research for you? Ooh. Go to your own research. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay. And, and I could tell the way he was looking at me thinking, this guy's too young to even be on the field for asking sure. me these questions. But yeah, and now we have a great relationship with Peter, but with so many of them. It's mm. that treatment when I got that you get when you first arrive where you're like, yeah, I know. It's that rookie treatment that mm -hmm. you have to go through. It's so, interesting yeah. you mentioned Braje because Morgan, that's of course where you made your professional hey. um, start in Joma Cosmos. What about you? <laughs> what was your greatest shock? I think, to be honest, uh, <laughs> I'm going to speak about it. Mm -hmm. Aye, the dressing room here, Cosmos. Yeah. 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 And uh, the smokes. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know it's I got a shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I said the smoke. It could have been any smoke. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, that was a shock of my life because growing up, like, not knowing. Mm. Uh, these things and these things now are, are common practice in, in some yeah. places. Mm. And you go there and you think, ah, it's football. You don't see the in the background yes. scene. You don't see the dressing rooms. So mm. And I get there, game day. Hey, I'm asking myself, what's going on there? Oh, is there fire there? Are we, what's going <laughs> on? Are we cooking or something? Special project. Oh, special project. Yeah. So that was my yeah. like rude awakening to to something that, yo, I actually afterwards mm -hmm. I, I then understood, uh, some is not done for ill ill like ill intentions. For sure. Mostly it's just protection and we come from Africa and mm. you know, you, you, you get to understand how different cultures work. So yeah, yeah, sure. for me that was a huge culture shock, but they 
Uh, yeah. Especially because upume cheese in, you know, Morgan. Mm. So it, yeah, it's yeah. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> take that. The cheese that's right there next to you. You know, the whole lot of cheese. Actually, you we know, might as well for, bring for you in. Cheese boy right here. <laughs> Super story. <laughs> so our, our cheese boy in the middle over here, Thank Morgan, you. requested this cheese. Do you yeah. wanna perhaps also indulge our listener as to, I mean, the viewers as well? What's with the cheese? Look, uh, f I've got a, a, a good reason for that because I'm a cheese lover and uh -huh. mm -hmm. now after football you know cheese and, and wine you know mm -hmm. it goes together and I when I retired obviously uh, Stellenbosch came in and I started appreciating life because you know the mm -hmm. older you become you yeah. you know your body you understand how you need to operate for sure it keeps you healthy wine is good one glass of wine <laughs> 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 Wine and, and, and cheese goes together like a cheese board, you know. So for me, it's just been that it's got grapes, uh, mm -hmm. you know. That's where the wine stems from. So for me, it's just those things. Makes sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. you put us in a very problematic situation because we're going to fight with the finance department now. <laughs> Somebody has to pay for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we were already uh, arguing yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. He's walking serious. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. I, I really appreciate the effort, you know, because I know it's not a lot of places that, that have. Yeah, yeah. And the way you put it, I thought you guys were in Zotata, cheese, yeah, lie. Indeed. That is the proper stuff, eh? No, that is the real No, I, I appreciate it, you know, and unfortunately, I'm not sharing it with you guys. It was oh it's meant God. for me. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have it. Yeah. But thank you, thank you so much. It, it thank you for joining. Joining us, Morgs, we appreciate it. All right, so now you know the story as to why we've got the cheese board here. It's for our guest and, of course, uh, the, the dreams and the realization. Funny enough, what I realized, um, I know you guys didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I was about to ask. You mm -hmm. never asked. I was just it, about oh to ask. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, yeah. anyway, so um, for me, uh, journalists, of course, first time now in a press conference, pre match, I mean, after the match and post match, right? So um, I ask a certain coach uh, a tactical question. This coach says to me, my sister, um, if you want to come coach this club, yeah, you are more than welcome to apply. I was like, oh, excuse me? Like, I was so hurt because it's like your first time and you're just like, what is going on? Uh, but fortunately, the club officials were there. They came to me and they're like, no, man, um, don't take it personal. He's just that guy, you know, he doesn't want to be questioned. And he came to apologize as well. And I was like, okay, fine. But from there. I stay away from tactical questions because ah. I'm just like, mm -mm. <laughs> you don't want to rub coaches the wrong way. Yeah. Because yeah, they feel like you're questioning their decisions. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. And by the way, I know, I know who's the coach. Let's be honest, some of them, they don't know what they're doing. Like, mm. that's why they won't answer. Because if, you, if someone asks you a question, a tactical question, yeah. mm -hmm. you can just twist it around and, and, and you don't really need to give them the the answer or whatever, you know? For sure. But touch on it and then move away from it. But I don't understand how, yes, heat of the moment, mm -hmm. they've lost the game or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's not the, the result that they wanted. You're asking a tactical question, yes, maybe not the right time, but yeah. some of them are just lazy and, and, and they think that you as a journalist are not, you just thumb sucking and mm. you trying to pick the person's brain to educate someone. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, mm. yeah, fair. They don't look at it like that. They, like, <laughs> tactics, <laughs> really? Football has been like this. How long has football been? For Forever, sure, you know? For sure, yeah. All these tactics, it's always been there. Now it's just given a name. Unlike Morgan, because you need to see the younger coaches. The younger coaches get it. No offense to, of course, the, the more mature. No, 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 matured. <laughs> <laughs> the more mature generation. But on that note, you do know that we have, of course, our regular features that we have here on the show. That being, of course, our top stories and our star of the week. So we'll start with finding out, of course, what's been happening in the world of sport in our headlines. Mamilo Di Sundance coach Fulani Mugwena will be hoping key midfielder Tebo Mugwena recovers in time for the Champions League semi-final clash against Tunisian Giants Esperance on Saturday night. Mugwena limped off the pitch shortly after he scored a trademark thunderous shot during Sundance 2-2 draw with Morocco Swallows midweek. Akane Simbani and Wade from Nikia are expected to light up the track amid tight battles at the Athletic South Africa Senior Track and Field combined events and relay championships which will be held at the Msunduzi Athletic Stadium in Peter Marisburg from Thursday to Sunday. 
South African captain Laura Wolfrat has moved into the top five of the ICC women's ODI batting rankings after helping the Proteus to a seven-wicket victory over Sri Lanka in the second match of the ICC Women's Championship Series in Kimberley. Wolfrat has overtaken Australia's Elise Perry to fifth position and has been number one in the ODI rankings in the past and is presently ranked third in the ICC Women's T20 batting rankings. Well, a lot has been happening in the world of sport. Keeping it moving, we go over to my favorite feature. Uh, fixture, look at that feature. That, of course, being our star of the week. We'll start with you this time around, Susan mm. Now, who's your star of the week? Well, it's uh, from uh, Hollywood Super, Super Hollywood. Yeah, the English Super today League. is just like <laughs> <laughs> tongue twisting. <laughs> Hollywood Dead Super League uh, yeah. fixture. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> I know. Uh, Sundowns uh -huh. um, played uh, over the weekend against uh, Linda Lally Ladies. First, uh, well, for Linda Lally Ladies, they're back to the top flight. Of course, they've they won their first game. They've mm -hmm. struggled ever since. Mm -hmm. Sundowns lost most recently, but they they they, they had a great game uh, on Sunday. Won seven 0 at yeah. Sundowns. And Mitchell Minis, the uh, young lady who uh, has made the uh, papers of late. In fact, the headlines in recent times. I don't know if you guys remember between the Kosafa um, uh, CAF Champions League. Mm -hmm. Tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, she looked like Ronaldinho. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. From Sundowns. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, from Sundowns. So she's got a hat trick. And uh, yeah, that's my player of the week. All right. Five goals she's got, I think, so far this season. Okay, Matlati. I must be careful how I say it because it's also a bit of a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. uh, the Proteas captain, women's captain, Laura Wolfart. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, she's got a century against Sri Lanka in the second ODI um, last week. And because of that, she has moved into the top five of um, uh, the, the, the best batters um, in the world. Um, mm -hmm. She's number five now. And also at the same time, she's number three among the top uh, batters in T20 cricket. So very nice of her. I know they're playing today being a Wednesday mm -hmm. um, in the third and final ODI. Hopefully she can score another more runs there. Oh, but that's, that's my player for the that's my player for the for the for the week, and let me uh, let me <laughs> take the first. <laughs> you guys are fighting us. Who's gonna ask today? It's oh, so cute. Oh, what is your player of the week? <laughs> I <laughs> love <laughs> this. Maybe you beat you to it. You're too slow, <laughs> 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 but to answer you, Matlati, um, for me we go to MotoGP. 19-year-old uh, Pedro Acosta. I mean, he's been absolutely brilliant. You you go into MotoGP your first year and you're making such an impression with the big team of course um, and of course being on the podium now in Qatar which I thought was absolutely impressive uh, the king of Qatar Mark Marquez unfortunately he crashed out of that race but for Costa to you know just be presently there I think for me that's absolutely impressive so he gets my note of star of the week Morgan I know you don't have one but from the three who's your favorite I think the yeah, yeah. No. The lady. Trust ah, you to stay big ups to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw a picture of her actually, and and I made us tell it He must actually tell us the truth. Uh, uh, is he the father or not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, during the tournament, when uh -huh. I first got to see her, the the Kosafa tournament, mm -hmm. so I was commentating, and now I don't want to say it because you don't want to hurt feelings, but you want to put it out there. Yeah. So I said, well, the team is called Brazilians, and um, they you know wear the same colours as the Brazilians, and one player in particular uh -huh. looks like a legendary Brazilian, and that's how mm. I left it. I didn't say anything. Oh. So then they cut to her, and then it's up to. Now the viewers to run with it. Uh. But did that not catch on the social media? Yeah, like, I did. Mm. And You're so big, proud of yourself, aren't big. you? Poetry well, in motion. Look, that's like, what we're we there for. Oh. What we're there for, you know what I mean? Honestly speaking, that she 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 I think she's seeing the opportunity and she's yeah, riding the right. wave. Yeah. And and it's gonna spur on to do well and do better because already she's linked with a legendary footballer. For sure. Coincidentally, she plays for Sunday. Brazilian. Mm -hmm. Brazilian. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a Brazilian. So they look alike. Mm -hmm. She's scoring goals. So I think. Right the wave. Her, yeah, right the wave until the wheels come off. All right. On that note, we then now move over to the good part. Morgan has said, listen, guys, for you guys, we talk about absolutely everything and anything. We're not shying away. So Matlatin Patlele is ready with his headline already um, that he's <laughs> thinking about. <laughs> so, Morgan. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, I'm glad that, of course, you've you've opened up yourself to this, right? Um, talk to us about. Um, we'll start with the fact that because you're also a businessman, right? We'll talk about the commentary. We'll
we'll talk about the football in a bit. But being a businessman, you started that, of course, while still in your playing days, playing for Kaiser Chiefs. How did that apparel line come out for you? And also, how is it still going currently? Look, firstly, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm sitting amongst... Hey, I want to be serious. <laughs> so, look, um, you look at it in, in any way, everything comes to an end. Anything good comes to an end. And mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be a sour end for myself. Mm -hmm. However, trust you me, it's, it's still hard till today. Um, how I started the brand is I wanted to make a difference in my community. Um, and then a friend of mine said, look, you, you can but you need money for that. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, okay. If you need money for that, let's put our brains together. And he came up with a, a nice suggestion. He says, listen, why don't you make clothes and sell it? And a percentage goes to uh, anything that you want to do in the community. And that's, that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always had a love for sporty, casual mm -hmm. type of clothes. So, so for me, it, 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 it was a fit for me because mm -hmm. I'm not a formal guy um, the sport that i'm into is obviously uh, overseas is well known for a lifestyle yeah, yeah. Uh, the players do it these days um, the beckhams of the world that was also my inspiration the beckhams mm -hmm. of this world how mm -hmm. they did uh, redid themselves and they're still relevant till today so for me that's how it started and i did i did a lot in my community and i still continue doing mm -hmm. it's not enough mm -hmm. because uh, it's it's uh, I'm an island, actually. When you look at how many kids are actually not getting them the bare minimum. For sure. I try my level best to help and educate um, some of the kids that I can, mm -hmm. clothe them, some of them, give them the bare minimum, as I'm saying, the foods. Mm. So for me, that, that, that was the journey that actually how it started for me. Can I follow up on that? Um, I know, Mabina, you also want to quickly ask on that. but. You know, the conversation mainly from former footballers, right, is then when talking to the younger players, you know, the upcoming footballers, that stay away from the designers. Um, that's not going to help you. You know, you're just wasting money and all of that. Um, and with you and your wisdom now, what's your take on, on clothing? And, of course, younger footballers having that interest in, in looking good and being stylish and the designers? Look at it. Um, look at it in this way. Do you really need uh, a jacket that's worth 20,000 rand? Look at it. If, if, if you really need it, yes, and you've got the buck for it, and if it's not going to shake your, your bank balance, mm -hmm. go for it. However, that same jacket that you bought at 20K, are you going to sell it or are you going to keep it in your wardrobe? And is that 20K when you're done with football? Is that 20K not going to be needed somewhere, somewhere? So f for me to make the next generation understand. Mm. Do your needs first. Yes, and have 5% of your wants. Not everything, because these days we see players overseas wearing Louis Vuitton, uh, Gucci, uh, Makosa, mm -hmm. you know, the boys of Soweto, mm. uh, the MG apparels. Mm -hmm. you, you see it and it's like, ah, they look good. But they've got the money for it. They've got the financial power for it. We for don't. Sure. If, you, if, if he spends 50K on a jacket, that's like, it's not even going to hurt a Lionel Messi. Mm. But if an MG takes 50K, uh, trust you me, mm. where do you then say, uh, I'm doing well mm. and this is what I can do? This is what, yes, gift, a gift for yourself, yeah. To motivate, yes, good. But you can't do it all the time. Mm. Mm. You, you mentioned community, and um, it strikes me because most recently I was uh, on a trip uh, to Lesotho with William Shongwe. And whilst we were there, the Prime Minister of Lesotho um, had a fireworks show on his birthday mm -hmm. for his community where he's from. So specifically for the community where he's from. And William Shongwe was moved by that. And he always tries to do something for the community back home in Eswatini. Mm. And he was saying, look, if I could surprise them with a fireworks thing like this, yeah. it would be big and they'll appreciate it so much back home. And it made me wonder why or where does it stem from, this need to always want to give back to the community? Because um, there's a few footballers, a former footballers I've spoken to that are of an older generation 
that have that thinking in mind where they want to give back to the communities where they're from. And now here you are saying the same thing. Where does that stem from? Look, I think if we, if we be honest, the uh, we, we, majority of footballers come from disadvantaged backgrounds. Yes. And uh, not everybody has, has the, uh, comes from the, the, the suburbs or whatever. And giving back, you going back and inspiring someone else and saying, I come from the hood that you come from. Mm. Mm. And if I can make it, you initially can also make it. And you are supplying someone it could have been the worst day in a kid's life uh, that day. And you happen to come along and say, ah, let's do something, uh, whatever sport, whatever chess tournament or whatever. They, earlier on, they could have had like a bad idea saying, ah, I hate my life. Or, uh, now you're coming with something and saying, okay, let's do something else. That's that small inspiration that you coming with a suggestion to do something like that that's already changing. You don't need to give the person money or whatever, mm -hmm. or, but just being there and interacting with people, for me, uh, it changed my life. I can, I can literally say it changed my life because I had the opportunity to meet Lucas yeah. and I was very young. Mm -hmm. And look, look at me now. Mm -hmm. How many other kids has he touched? How many other lives has he touched? So I felt if he's touched my life, how many other kids can I then say? It might not be a kid that knows me or whatever, but when I leave the space that he's in, he's going to be told by his dad, his uncle, whoever. Yeah. And that's going to be like an inspirational story. Yeah. It's always nice leaving a legacy like that, unlike feeding the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A legacy that will forever live, because obviously the, they need the food, yes, the nutrition. But for me, it's that moment that, wow, I actually met X, Y, Z. Sure. And I actually had opportunity to be in the same space. And I actually sat and asked questions and he answered. He might not have answered everything, but just having that opportunity to touch someone's life in a different way. Sure. Mm. And then when we move into football now, Morgan, um, I mean, you've played at various clubs, Cosmos we mentioned, Supersport, Kaiser Chiefs. Stelis, Sikukune. Is that? What am I missing? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and internationally as well. And internationally as well. And you've managed to uh, win, of course, titles in the PSL and, of course, then our first division, which is pretty impeccable. When you look into your career, now you've got time, you know, when you think back, where would you say you've played your best football one? And also, your, I mean, your career had so many injuries, Morgan, and, and we were talking with Mabena earlier on that if we could have protected you from injuries, that's something that we would have loved to do. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's, it's part of the game. Talk to us about how you also dealt with those injuries in your career. <sighs> Which one do you want first? Uh, you can start with uh, your memorable one, where you, of course, played your best football. Look, I, I, a lot of people may say, oh, I played my best football at Supersport. Uh, the first stint, because I went back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the initial part of me just getting into football, I must, I must big shout out to Prajay and his family, mm -hmm. because I was afforded opportunity that not a lot of people get. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, that was the beginning of a life changer for me. So that would be for me the best. Although I did the, I did the worst, got red cards, I suspended a lot, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. But that for me was a learning curve. And if I hadn't gone through that path, I don't think I would have been the person that I am today. For sure. uh, and, and that opportunity uh, given to me for me, I think that was the best and how I, 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 I grappled it. And I, uh, to be honest, I want to I wanna say this on, I was, I'm not the best player. I wasn't the best player. However, I made it a point that things that I don't know, I teach myself. Mm -hmm. And the, the best thing is self-taught things, you'll never forget it. Trust you me, you'll never forget if you do something self-taught. Yeah. Now, MG, sorry, okay. before, before you move to the injuries and stuff. Yes. Cosmos. Mm -hmm. um, Cosmos was good during your days. Uh, some very, very good young players and stuff. Um, just uh, how was that environment? 
and also um, the issue of Bamuza. A lot of people have got different uh, views about Bamuza. Some say he was not that, you know, obviously you can compare with his father, but how good was he having you having played with him? Look, that environment uh, taught me a lot. Uh, it, it grew me in so many ways, financially, uh, mentally, physically mm. also. It, 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 it tests you because <laughs> you, I was given a stipend for years and years. <laughs> and years, <laughs> and years. Wait, wait, did it come on a check? <laughs> was it cash? Aye, it was cash. <laughs> oh, you're getting a cash? Yeah. <laughs> How about you for that? <laughs> It was an envelope, you know what? Hey, I have a nine calls. Bob Machola. I don't know how 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 he was dealing with things, but hey, we got shang my ten rand, you know, ten rand, you know, old ten rand it was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's stuck it in your envelope, you know? Mm. And it was what? What was I getting? Three fifty. Three hundred fifty, yeah. yeah. Three fifty for this per week. Sorry? Is this per week? <laughs> ah, I was asking you. Don't see you. And my transport was literally 550 a month. Jeez. And you were making 350? Yeah. That's insane, bro. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Financially, I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah, yeah. I knew, okay, I love my mom. Like these older ones, when they get paid, uh, try and stick close by. Was a ten a young kid, over ten good a plus minute three fifty. I must cover me for you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. And financially, I made fr I made friends. I made sure I, you had to be Pamuza's friend. Mm. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, sure. always, even tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, pela eh, come to proof extension. So, so you know, we <laughs> we had to, you had to teach yourself how to budget of other people. For sure. And it's it's a bad trade that, but uh, it helped me. Survival. Uh, yeah, survival mm. of the fittest. There, you. You then have friends that I want to low, I meal, I live low, I low, I transport, to So I needed to balance out how I friend or befriend you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and some, some of it, to be honest, it wasn't genuine because I, I, needed to, uh, I needed to get to where I'm at right now. For sure. Using them. But some of them, obviously, we got closer and we became friends later. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I got a rude awakening. Once you leave the football fraternity, bro, you don't have friends. Yeah, mm. yeah you you don't have friends. Yeah. So yeah, going back to Upamuza. Mm -hmm. Look, Pamuza is his own character, and I think the it didn't help that his dad was a legend. Mm. Uh, he was a he could play. Mm. Honestly, he could play, and people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care what they say. This is my opinion. He could play. Yeah. Yeah. Could he play better than others? Yes. Were the other guys better than him? Yes. But was he favored or yes? Because obviously, uh, it's his father's club. Mm -hmm. At some points uh, you wouldn't need him in the game, but he's there because. Uh, his dad and his dad was the coach and we can't blame him mm -hmm. the father's also trying to protect him and give him opportunity at the same time but yeah for me he was he was a very good he was good at moments yeah, mm, yeah. now cosmos i used to say this a lot when i was talking uh commentating games with cosmos or talking about you and your past i saw you from the school of the hard knocks in that cosmos traditionally even before your years uh defenders behave a certain way. They are known to be rough. I mean, I'm not of life and so on. You can count the number of um, uh, defenders. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to know. Many classroom lapobati. Many When I was in the culture, I to look, uh, there's a time in the game, that's just that you look on and that's when you, that. When you come to a place, there's a certain uh, culture. Mm. Like here, I can tell, I, I'm a hot man, you know? <laughs> 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 the culture there, 
they don't tell you, they don't teach you how to do it. It just automatically happens mm -hmm. because it would be wrong of me to say, yeah, Oprah Jay says it, yeah, people are lying. He doesn't mm -hmm. say that. But he has always had a neck of people that are very physical and he's made it his trademark and his trademark worked for him because players that left him and went on to do better things, you tell me that the DNA that obviously mm -hmm. they say Pirate, um, Cosmos has, mm -hmm. Doesn't, it can't just leave you. Mm. You just become better and better and better and you become more refined. So it's best you start with Braje. Mm -hmm. Back then it was best you start with Braje and then you work your way up. So I, 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 like I've got a son that's currently playing. So I tell him the tiers, the different tiers. It's the lower tier, which is tier four, tier three. Tier, and I put it in the teams. That's how the teams are. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be successful, you can't go from tier one or let me say tier four at the bottom and go to tier one. For mm -hmm. sure. You are bound to fail somewhere, somehow. Mm -hmm. You might ri ride the wave, mm -hmm. but in development and they'll see, it will seep, you'll see slowly, ah, hello, later in life, I'm gonna development or he's mm -hmm. got development. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. so if you go through the tiers, yes, you can jump one tier and go to the second tier above that, but you can't go from four to so those are the type of things you need to, you can't tame a, a tame horse, but you yeah. can tame a wild horse. Mm, for sure. That's how we were tamed when I moved on from Cosmos to other teams. Okay, so we'll stick with the hard knock a little bit um, because there's an incident, right? You're playing for Chiefs here uh, against Bitbiz Bits and, um, you know, a freak accident is what you called it, right? Um, and uh, you got a two-match ban and, and a financial fine as well. Yeah. Let, me, let me put it straight. I got a 100K. Mm. 100K fine is what yeah. you got. Yeah. Talk to us. Was it a freak accident? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't a freak accident. Uh -huh. I want to be honest. It wasn't a freak accident. And, 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 and if, if you gentlemen uh, <laughs> know... <laughs> If a Muslim person spits in your face, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and not just once, twice, and maybe it was three times, and I went to there, I was like, my guy, can't you see how my face looks like? But obviously, uh, then the worst happened. I, I, I lost it. Mm -hmm. I lost it. Like I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't keep it in. Yeah. And I went to the guys, like, my guy, look what you did. Ah, I even did it worse. He went, he went, you know, my mouth don't tell us. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I know, oh, yeah. I'm not even some, I'm not even some fun, I'm not even some So, I, un, unfortunately, I, I, I took the worst decision there. Mm. I blacked out because I was so angry. Yeah. And so, it's basically the things we don't get to see on camera yeah, yeah, yeah. that are happening behind the scenes. And unfortunately, um, we just see your reaction to what's been happening. It's almost like the Materazzi um, Zidane, Zidane yeah. situation exactly. back in 06, where we idol. just see the reaction, but we don't know what's mm -hmm. been happening. Yeah, yeah you, you don't know what's happened, what's happened prior to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a uh, typical example with the Zidane. Uh, oh, I, uh, I don't think any footballer wants to go into a game and saying, I'm going to do that on mm. purpose. There must, it stems from somewhere. For sure. And I, could, I couldn't take it. I, I lost it. I literally, literally lost it. I, uh, I apologized after because I felt I had to be remorseful. Mm -hmm. However, when I went to DC, I wasn't asked anything. You know the DC only takes the moment that was mm. Mm -hmm. not captured, but they don't they don't care about the, the, the befores. And the triggers. Yeah, mm -hmm. the triggers and mm -hmm. all that. And, and that's why I feel sometimes they're so unfair because there's something that led to that. Mm. I don't wake up wanting to bump my car into the wall. Sure. There must have been I. It's either it's fatigued or something must. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I just had to. So were you forced with that apology? Because I remember seeing it on Twitter. Is it something no, that you had I, to do? No. Or then I, 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 I genuinely did it. Mm -hmm. I called him. I called him after the game. Um, yeah, I actually looked for him for a while because Gavin was the coach on that side. Yeah. And Gavin had to testify or something. We had to write a, something to say, hey, do you want to open up a case? And all that. So Gavin's like, you guys are insane because 
this is not the character of the person. You guys all know that. But mm -hmm. now it was, they wanted to make it a big thing, which, it w it, yes, it helped. It helped me also as a, as a being afterwards. Yeah. I went for counseling. I still go for counseling. Mm -hmm. So From that one incident? Yeah. You're still going? No, no, no. This is more of... A personal growth a, thing. Personal growth. I yeah. left the game. I don't have, uh, I don't smell the, the grass anymore. I like see. all those dealing with, see. with all those matters, yeah. It, it's talking about dealing with matters. Now, um, 2010 is coming up. We're all looking forward to this World Cup. There's no doubt your, your name is amongst those that should be there. Uh, starting, not starting, that's another debate, but should be there. Then the injuries come. Um, and it's probably the most painful story from a South African the South African group was your mission from the uh, World Cup. Uh, how does then, now talking about dealing with difficulties, how difficult was that for you? Watching it, seeing the whole country, Philip is here, mm. and it was a beautiful thing, but you should be a part of the show, mm. and you're not. Look, I mean, everything happens for a reason. Uh, prior to that, I had an injury that kept me out for a year, for forgetting about the World Cup and all that. I was still at Cosmos. We were playing Ajax, uh, ruptured three of my ligaments in my knee. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, those type of operations, when you come back from there, like, mm -mm, you'll be playing football, yeah. it's over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, little do you know, I've, uh, I've got, I'm very competitive, very competitive with everything that I do. Uh, low key, but very yeah. low key. So the doctor says to me, ah, you're not gonna play football anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. So you, me, and... Uh, why are you telling me that I won't be able to play football, but you just a doctor and you need to just make sure that I'm okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that also spurred me on, on to say, yeah, this guy can't be the one uh, telling me. And anyway, uh, I'm from the townships. I'm, this is my, this is changing my family's life. Yeah. Sure. And if I stop now, I left school. I st if I stop now, I didn't study further. Mm -hmm. What now? I was yeah, like, no chance. No mm -hmm. chance, my man. Uh, then that injury happens. Come back. Uh, I play, I think it was in 2006, 2007, where the whole year. And back then, physios, and they were just introduced into the game. And mm -hmm. um, what do you call biconnects? All these new f nice fancy terms yeah 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 I, I like it because they do do the job and they yeah. they, they recover mm -hmm. is faster mm -hmm. uh, I do all those things then I move to obviously to super sport so me getting that injury I always looked at it this is an opportunity afforded by the game mm -hmm. to you it's not owed to you mm -hmm. and it happened to me that I had to get injured again just before the World Cup. As heartbreaking as it may seem, the world owes me nothing. And I need to put my best foot forward, whether I get dealt with a blow like that or something else in life. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it's, 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 it's the, you can get knocked down 50 times, but I'll get up, get up. to do the 51st. Nice. So I, I, I always look at it and if, the younger Morgan, yes, was hurting. But what do I say to my son? And say, I, I wasn't part of the World Cup. And then I retired immediately after. What am I saying to him? Great. Mm. I'm a, I'm a, I give up. Mm. So how I say to him, you cannot give up on your dreams. Nothing's going to stop you to reach your true potential at whatever sure. you do. Mm. So for me, that was also a message to a lot of people saying, you know what? If I can do it, why can't you? So then how do you then deal with those injuries, Morgan? Because in our space, you, you know this, everybody deals with it differently, right? Um, be it you run to whatever will bring you comfort, be it chocolate, be it whatever, um, will bring you joy at that time. What was your coping mechanism? Yes, you have to get up, but what was kind of your crutch that was you were leaning onto to help you cope with it? My people around me, actually, if... if I've got an amazing support structure, amazing. From my late grandmother, to my mom, to my wife, to, mm. you know? Mm. All the people that are around me are, are very supportive. So for me, it was just one of those where we, we just 
gathered around and I was like, this can't be the end. This is only beginning. This is how God's testing you. And also uh, religion. Uh, I, I then became a very... Spiritual. Real, yeah. Spiritual. A, lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of meditating because you can't do anything when you're injured like that. Like you can't mm -hmm. do anything. You, and every time you'd question yourself, you, you'd rather do something else and pray or mm. meditate or, or look at something in a different view because you don't want to live in your situation yeah. and die there. You mm. want to live in the situation and get out of it. Could so, you watch the matches? Could yeah, you watch yeah, the was, World Cup? Did you enjoy well, the World Cup? I watched each and every game that Bafana played yeah. except the... No, 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 we only played three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't too many. Didn't go no. too far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I watched, I, watched, I watched the opening. Yeah. Pretoria? Yes. Uruguay. That was cold. Yeah, crazy cold. Uh, oh, you were there physically? Yeah. Yeah, I was and there. It was too bloom. Yeah. Yes. It was one in bloom. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. bloom as well. Yeah. So I, I managed to also, I don't understand how you... As a as a sports person, or you you you're in the game, and, and unfortunately you're not part of it. You, you can't hold grudges against anything because this thing owes you nothing. For sure. It, it how many people in the world have the opportunity that I have, mm. or had the opportunity that I have? So why am I crying foul? How many players in the world that uh, top class players missed World Cups? Yeah. Yes, it's the it's the pinnacle of football. I can make a prime example, and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry to make this. Lucas Twala played the World Cup. Mm. Can anybody tell me where Lucas Twala is now? True. How painful is Jeez. that? Yes. Yeah. How painful is that? that that's painful. Uh, I'm, I'm not picking out his name, but it, it just comes to mind that he went into the World Cup injured. Mm -hmm. And that injury obviously became a chronic and then he couldn't really play after. And so for me also it was, it's either I rush myself and anything reoccurs or re-ruptures or whatever, mm -hmm. or take my time and this opportunity will come again. But now I, it's not going to come again for me. And then how do I now say I want my son to play the World Cup? So someone else in my generation or in my bloodline yeah will be afforded opportunity and that's how I look at things. Mm. It's not me, me, me all the time. For sure. It's how I can empower the next one. Hey Mara, if charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. I start with me. <laughs> if my things are well, yeah. then we go outside. But yeah. that's, that's just uh, how I think. And okay. just to add, you are touching on something that a lot of it, 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 it's real and a lot of people don't want to talk about or because it may be a taboo or whatever the case may be. The issue of not just footballers but sportsmen and women having this sense of entitlement that the sport that they played you know, owes them something. Um, how important is when people are in their prime already start planning for the future so that they don't retire uh, without a proper plan. And then life becomes hard. And then you know, we go back to the same thing again, where they will say that their, their former clubs, are not, they don't care about them. The sports, they didn't look after them. Find, find your neck. Find what you really believe in, firstly. Uh, secondly, it's really tough to start something uh, that you don't know anything about, that you're not going to be hands-on because there's people that take chances. Mm -hmm. uh, I can make a prime example. I was very close with Phil Masinga and what happened to him is he invested and obviously then they said they were bankrupt or I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really tough. You can't, you can't really say this is what you want to do and you let someone else run it because it's it's not that way. Mm -hmm. You need to be hands on on a lot of things, and it's a good thing. But find someone that will that shares the same interest as you. Yeah. Find someone that you really can trust. Uh, I, I family, family, <laughs> But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, find someone that you can pay. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, that could do the job for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need to do this, like you need to check this person thoroughly because uh, I, I can be Chloe, I can look good, and then come with you and say, yeah, you know, Malaka, I can give you, uh, <laughs> in four months, I can give you four million. Eh? Yeah. Just put two million in and then... Yeah. Four is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And then nothing yeah. comes. And then Tololo. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just, oh, it's, it's a really fine line. Uh, trusting someone and, and, and... So I think, uh, to answer your question, I think let's, let's educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And do what the rugby boys are doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they don't they're not doing rugby because uh, it pays more. Uh, you've got a longer lifespan. Yeah. You've got trust in rugby. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, there's so many things in rugby that football has the potential to become that, but we separate the football from the sport. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Top rugby players, they only pay for bond. Car sponsored, grocery sponsored, petrol sponsored, cell phone post sponsored, everything is sponsored. The money they earn, which is a lot of money, they put it aside. They when they retire, farms. they go to the farm. Yes, they mm. buy farms, they invest, uh, they invest it for you. Uh, in financial advisors, I'm just making example. For sure, for sure, yeah. yeah. How many financial advisors could have gone to that guy and said, guy, in the so, 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 would you have believed them? It's, it's <laughs> education. Yeah. Educate yourself that a financial advisor must have uh, a number, a certain number, that the practice number that they For work sure. with. It's like a doctor. Mm. Mm. But the rugby boy, let's say Ohad, Ohad has been playing yeah. and he's yeah. been wrecking the money. Sure. Mm. Because the background, education, doesn't mean he needs to go to a, 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 a private school. Yeah. Go to the scale of the See, Educate, guys. We need to tell these kids they need to educate themselves. 100%. So just to then wrap up the injury conversation, Morgan, um, one of the biggest things I remember that you dealt with um, when you are coming back is, is the doubt that you got from a lot of people. I remember you alluding to the fact back then that I wish I didn't let the doubt get into my head because then I would have just focused on my game and what I have to do. Talk to us about that mental aspect as well in terms of the doubt getting to you and, of course, then your get back, especially at Kaiser Chiefs. Hey, yeah, no, the, uh, so, so I'll, um, um, if I hear you correctly from leaving Kaiser Chiefs going on to the other team, Supersport, which is... Not really, mm -hmm. but you can you can get Even to that from super sport because I'll actually add on to your question. Mm -hmm. um, it was an Achilles injury, right? Yeah. I, I think that kept you out of the World Cup. The talk amongst the football fraternity was, look, it's a recurring injury. Um, this could be the beginning of the end for Morgan. That was then, 2010. Um, you still then moved to Chiefs, um, so I think that's where Chloe's question comes from. Uti, how do you get through that self-doubt, the doubt that everybody has now? on you, your physicality, your ability to still continue with the game and still move higher up, if you, if you call it that, in the move to Chiefs, and still perform? Look, the self-doubt is obviously going to come in. Uh, media has up. The media is powerful, guys. The media will actually make you doubt yourself because uh, the moment... I like making prime example. The moment someone from your family sees Ah, Chloe, now she's losing it, she's cuckoos or whatever. And mm -hmm. and say, hey man, now what's that going to set into you? Mm -hmm. Already how many people have seen it? Yeah. Now phone calls are coming in, you getting it. Like, it's going to, it's not going to sit easy with you. So, mm -hmm. it, for me, it didn't sit easy with me. However, I, I then really looked at it and I was like, no, but this can't be my life. This, this, uh, me listening to the outside, it's like listening to the guy on the shoulder, the two guys, Satan, eh? oh, and the angel, or the angel or something. You know that, that sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. who are you going to listen to? Mm. This one is going to be louder. For sure. But the one that's silent, that's, hey, ah, you can't, you've got this, my guy. Mm. Ah, this one's busy saying, ah, I'll pay now. Yeah. So for me, that was literally it. And, 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 how you deal with it is uh, go 
Well, I dealt with it. Go and exercise. The sport that you're doing requires you to be physically fit, mm. mentally mm. fit. If it was someone else, I would say, yeah. And, and we don't tell each other enough to say, listen, stay away from that thing. When you're injured, mm. when you're suspended, those are the things that you don't need. Do it when you are fit and healthy and in a good space, yeah. Like almost celebrating. Mm. Celebrate yourself. Mm. But the celebrating yourself, there's a way to do it. The players overseas do it. Rugby rugby players. Yeah. In the mm. dressing room with the coach. But now they still have that notion in South Africa where we don't know how to limit ourselves. And they're right. I don't I don't don't get them wrong. We don't know what's the limits. Rugby players will drink two beers and that's it. Yeah. We want to overindulge. Now, when we're frustrated, where do we go? On the other side. So, from your opinion then, how would you sum up your stay at, at Kaiser Chiefs? Because some would say, man, he had so much potential. You know, we we're looking forward to Morgan there, but it just didn't go according to plan because of the injuries. From you, your perspective, how was your stay at Kaiser oh, Chiefs? perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look at me today. Um, uh, that platform, if you don't, if you don't use it to your advantage, ah, then I, mm -hmm. I call her. You, you, you. So that's, to me, that was a business transaction, not just football, yeah. mm. but um, something that I can leverage off. For sure. Uh, because with no disrespect to all the other teams, the moment you start saying Kaiser Chiefs, a lot of people know mm -hmm. um, and, and it puts you on a platform where my guy you can't fail man it's mm. hard for you to fail and and it gives you opportunities to meet ministers uh, people into construction yeah. uh, it's like a business opportunity it's like a, a networking place so for me I took that as that I didn't have the greatest football but I had the greatest interactions with people mm. in the fraternity so that on its own broadened my horizon in a lot of things even things that I'm doing today I can still go to some of the people and say hey how are you mm. you're good um, this is what I have can you assist do you know someone and they'll plug you you know mm. if you had a genuine relationship with the person or you were honest and and very friendly people that are in that position or at, the, at, at bigger teams. Yeah. You, 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 the dumbest thing that us footballers do, we do this. Yeah. <laughs> My guy, smile with each and every one, whether it's the guy at the parking lot, whether it's, you do not know what influence does that guy has. For sure. And that for me was, that's my mantra. Respect everybody. I don't care who, who says what. Um, give everybody their two minutes. Yes, you might not have. Uh, and I find a lot of uh, I, a lot of times where I'm like, hey, what man, I'm busy man. Samelen Mara, I'll give you your two minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll apologize to the next person and say, listen, I got held up by X, Y, Z. I gave the person the two minutes. Yeah. That interaction. I mean, mm. so for me, I, I try and, 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 and just leave a smile on everybody. I came being papala of course, when I came in. All the time, it's who you are. Ah, you can't tell people. All the time. Ah, you can't tell all people. The time. <laughs> but I can guarantee you when I leave here, yeah. and people see me quiet, they'll say, ah, but where's that character that we saw sure. yeah. on the podcast? Mm. You, you have to also balance out for sure yeah mg well, well we're still talking on uh, about chiefs firstly you, you you know you played for the club and you know we all know the the, the massive institution that this club is um when you look at them now uh, how, how 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 do you feel i feel great as a human being Fucking oh, really? <laughs> I feel great as a human being. Okay, thank you for that information. <laughs> uh, everything happens for a reason. 
yeah. The reason why I say everything happens for a reason. They are not, they are not entitled to win everything. Mm -hmm. They don't have entitlement. Yes, the history and the, the pedigree uh, says Chiefs is mm. uh, a team that brings, ch wins championships, wins mm -hmm. leagues, cups, whatever. However, it's not their time. They need to understand it's not their time and the world owes them nothing. They need to just relook at the situation and go and find the gem. Find what worked for them back then. Because mm -hmm. it's not lost, it's still there. Everything is there. The blueprint is there. Uh, the same managers are there. The owners there. So they have everything in their armor to, to, to salvage uh, the situation right now. Mm -hmm. And take, I mean, um, technically and tactically, obviously you watch them play. Um, a lot of people say maybe there's not much coaching happening at the place and stuff, but when you watch them play, do, do, do you like what you see? Football has changed, firstly. Mm. Um, what we were doing and what they're doing, I think they're way more advanced. They're way ahead of uh, uh, the game. And everybody around them has been proving. You mustn't mm. just look at what they're doing. Everybody around them are improving. If you look, if EG look at the team like Mamilodi Sundowns, their staff alone is like mm. 150. And that's the trend. Everybody has something to do, and there's either one or two people that can do it. So if, if Chiefs needs to add more staff members doing the work, so be it. Going back to the football, I don't want to say it's a sore sight for eyes or what, but teams know if they want joy, beat Chiefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every game that Chiefs plays is a cup final because there's a kid that wants to don that jersey that hasn't been, that has the opportunity to be seen and if he inflicts pain into the team that he loves and he wants to play for, yeah. he'll do it. He'll go the extra mile. He'll play out of his socks. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, they need to find players that know how big of a team that they're representing, yeah. how they need to rally. Because it, I don't think it's about the playing. I think it's, it goes down to um, team spirit. Uh, they've got a good squad. Mm. However, do they have the right team spirit? Do they have, do they do the things that really make them gel? We don't know that. Mm. So, if but the names that are there, like guys, they've got they've got quality players. However, it's just not coming to the party, and I, I can't really say it's a bad. They doing bad, or if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah. Speaking of quality, you played with uh, a few, well, a good number of players that were quality and some legendary in their own rights. Um, I just want to know, was there any player or were there any players where the day before the game you're like, oh, I'm going to go mark this guy tomorrow. I <laughs> it's going to be tough. I <laughs> <laughs> That gave you sleepless nights. A like, lot. Maybe name a few. A lot. Where you were like, yeah, hey, here I'm in charge here. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me be honest. That's how I, I, I coped a lot with I always used to put myself in the worst case scenario, like I'm going up against Chloe. Hey, Chloe, Zimangalogu. Oh, Chloe, when, when she does this, uh, mm. you always give the person so much props mm. Mm. so they don't shock you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I used yes. to prepare. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it, it worked very well for me because. I'd cover all areas at training. I'd cover all areas watching you. I'd cover everything, even mentally. I'm ready because I know I'm facing a giant. I'm facing, I always give you the props before anything else. I'd, I'd never be like, aye, it's going to sure. be an easy game. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you <laughs> never say that. And for me, funny enough, the person that I, DOCBC. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, 
It was all the, the, the nippy, petite Kermit Erasmus. <laughs> oh. mm. Billiard at sundowns. Mm. My word. I would... Hey, hey being faster, Pena. <laughs> <laughs> Billiard. Yeah. I'm being faster. I used to make sure that I fast because that kid is something else. Mm. Oh, he's, he's a machine. He's strong, he's quick, he's intelligent, he can jump. So he had everything. Yeah. And he was playing for Sundowns at that point. And Sundowns was... They were, they were about to do what they're doing right now. Mm. Mm. So, and they had uh, uh, our father, the, mm -hmm. the king of that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know guy, the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hey, hey, my, come, my friend. Eh? And you know, you know that guy would, I'm just venturing off a bit, sorry. Pizzo, my dad, and Pizzo. Mm -hmm. So my Dad was older than Pizzo, and Pizzo played for the same team that my dad played in, in the township. Mm -hmm. So Pizzo knew about me, and he studied me, and he knew, ah, he knew, so he'd study me so badly that he'd give Billiard information about me. Nice. To say, do this, he doesn't mm -hmm. know how to do that, do this, he'll get lost. Mm -hmm. and so I knew in the back of my head, I've got Pizzo, mm -hmm. I've got Billiard. Mm -hmm. He's already got information about me. On his own, he's a talented player. So yeah. I've already got two people to work against. My work is cut out. So that whole week, I'll fast on something. Mm. So for me, it was uh, give, give them their props and work hard at training because it will become easy in the I'm game. I'm glad you said GOCBC as well because people sleep on GOCBC. But he was a machine, yeah. Peter. He was a machine. Like he was, he was, oh, he was agile. He is. And is a very quiet human being, yeah. but very mm -hmm. agile, very intelligent. I know you don't know Dios. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost. I, I, I hate yeah, how we are friends. Hey, we'll you say, are, we'll you are nice. Like Google link. <laughs> you are an enemy. Who needs enemies? Sorry. Can we move on? Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not We're still talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, look. Um, I saw him the other day. We the same age. Mm -hmm. He's fit as a fiddle because he's still playing. Oh, uh, ABC in, in, in really? Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, he's something else. And because his body is petite, yeah. he has that uh, neck. Also, we are loose. Uh, yeah, you can't get fat if you are losing. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> uh, taking the cows for a walk, uh, you are fit, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's training. So, I think also how he 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 looks after himself. Fantastic. You're done now. Uh -oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I want to find out your thoughts with the youngsters. I remember while you were also coaching um, the DDC, DDC side in Sukukuna, you spoke about, you know, you're passionate about the youngsters and giving them opportunities. And now we're seeing that conversation continuing in the DSTV Premiership where we've got the likes of Mufugeng, your Shandra Campbells, you've got your Duba and Kaiser Chiefs. So a lot of exciting youngsters. Talk to us about the talent that you're seeing from the young players and the chances that they've been given. Look, uh, credit must go to the development structures, actually, that are still up and running, e.g. the School of Excellence, the Super Sport United, the, even the little ones, the ones in Randburg Football Club, mm -hmm. the Panoramas, mm -hmm. the uh, Robert Cham Kelly's, yeah. uh, am I forgetting, Linwood, FC. Uh, there's so many academies that are still up and running. Bedford View Country Club, although obviously Stars you need Africa. to... Yeah, Stars of Africa. Yes, Stars of Africa. I, I mustn't forget the other hey, stars of Africa. Ish. Can't forget those guys. Yeah, yeah, I can't. No, I actually, can't, I actually can't. spent some yeah. time there before I went to, from Supersport to Chiefs. Many yeah. guys have. Yeah. yeah. Um, all those uh, people are, are, are still plowing uh, mm -hmm. back into, they, they still have hope for our football. And they, look, the new kids on the block are actually showing that they, they're worthy of becoming the next generation that takes the football to a next level. So, uh, I'm very passionate about that. I'm all, I, I spend most of my time GDL, mm. uh, watching not, not just my son, but I'm watching the next generation because I, I feel as a up and coming young coach, you need yeah. to know the generation that will fall onto your lap. Mm. It mustn't mm -hmm. be a surprise like, oh, mm. so who's this, who's that? No, I, I need to know and go around and see how, oh, okay, I saw him playing at Stars of Africa, he was 13, yeah. Yeah. now he's 18. Mm. Oh, okay, the development's there, so I need to work on the other side of the game where uh, the development's there. Yeah. I need to teach him now how to use the development 
into getting into obviously going to the next level of things mm -hmm. because he's already got the foundations, right? Mm -hmm. I just needed the tactics and uh, how to approach because we, 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 we go on European standards and we don't go on African standards. Mm -hmm. and, and we always judge our, 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 our kids and our youngsters. Ah, Mbappe at 16, at 17. Yeah. You don't know what Mbappe was doing, what uh, football training he was doing. Mm -hmm. We only get to see when Mbappe is there. But we don't get to see the, the hard work that went un, under, uh, under the table. Mm -hmm. You just see the table on top that, ah, no, it is bought, but the process. Yeah. Uh, so that, to me, I don't want uh, our kids to lose that. And how I, I now do it, I've even got my own football team. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Called, it's called Como FC, where... Um, I'm actually very passionate about that. Como is in the northwest where mm -hmm. we afford kids opportunities to play uh, foot structured football. Uh, myself and my partner, we, we actually take kids to Spain. Mm -hmm. Kids that can afford the whole trip because we, we in South Africa obviously think when someone says he's taking kids overseas, they don't look at the financial. Yeah. Mm. They look at it as like, Ay, ma, la, la. hey, yeah. trust you me, it's not for free. Mm. It comes at a price. And you're affording yourself an opportunity to go overseas and see how things are run there. Mm. And that's what we do. Nice. We do that. Uh, in June, we're going to be hosting a tournament. Mm -hmm. I know I'm stealing your show, but no, anyway. No, go ahead. It's uh, what you we're do. We're hosting a tournament in Northwest mm -hmm. at the Royal Buffalo King. The, you know the Royal Buffalo yeah. King? We're hosting a tournament there for the kids' age seven no mm -hmm. nine eleven thirteen fifteen mm -hmm. that's the it's that's the age golden group. ages yeah. for me mm -hmm. uh we so so what we're doing there is what i think the country should have done back then so we're calling this tournament the spanish spanish world cup mm -hmm. in northwest because mm -hmm. we have links with uh, malaga city uh Malaga City, when we go from South Africa to Spain, we go to Malaga City and we mm -hmm. stay there, we interact there. And a lot of the players that have the financial power to go and study that side and play football, yeah. we leave them there with obviously either au pair that we know and that's obviously South Africa. And so so we, we, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a very touchy issue when you say development football because mm -hmm. I love to see kids getting an opportunity. Yeah. We were discussing something similar uh, most recently when we were talking about the Peter Masimani project that they've got mm, going on. Yeah. And I, I bring it up because of the ages. Um, uh, in a lot of the uh, development structures or people talking about development, they're talking 15, 16, 17, 18, um, as close as possible to making money out of the players. We're not really yeah. talking developing the players. Um, but now, like you're talking now under 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 mm -hmm. and so on. Peter's also talking as young as five. How important is it that when we talk development, we talk five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds to lay the proper foundation so that we don't have a, a, a situation where we've got talented footballers that didn't have the football coaching from a young age until they were like 19, 20, look which if, is the case for many of our footballers. Yeah, so look, if you, if you look at how, how, as I said, the European standards and our standards, uh, how they get it right is for every in and I'm just making a, a basic example in training. Every training session at a European team, let's say 13 year olds, mm. they have, if it's 20 players, they've got 25 balls. Sure. Mm. An African at 13, we've only got four balls. Yeah. Mm. So do you understand already equipment yeah. is already a problem? Yes. And when these three, four balls, uh, are not up to standard or it gets kicked out, that means if we're doing a, a, a juggling drill, there's only mm. four kids that are going to get yeah. better at it. Or if we're going to share, and as a coach, you need to think of, you need to think on your feet. Mm. Oh, well, you need to be very intelligent when you, when, you, when you think. You'll have an exercise that the four of them, if we have four balls, they'll use it. Here in this corner, we'll have a physical exercise. Mm. Mm. On the other corner, we'll have a mental exercise mm. where you, you know, you, you need to think like that. Yeah. But there, they do everything as a unit. And now you need to take all those things 
that kid was doing this, this kid was doing physical, mental, whatever. Now you still need to bring it together with them when they do the psychology sessions. Mm. They do it together. When they do training session juggling, they do it together. For sure. And clubs, clubs like Stellenbosch, big ups to them. Mm. They, they've included psychologists on Wednesday morning, the whole team compulsory for, the, for all their teams. So those are the type of things. Europeans, they have physios at 13. Mm. They have doctors at 13. Mm. Mm. Where now, who prepared? You need to be the physio. You need to pick the kids up. You need yeah. to uh, make sure uh, the kids are, are fed. Mm. Yeah. We are faced with a lot of things like that. And then we still expect the kids to play like uh, Odegaard. Odegaard is 21. Mm. Uh, uh, who's 21 that's, that's a footballer now that in, in South Africa? Just Maybe give me one name. Yes. No, it's just, it's can just you, below, can you put uh, yeah. Mufukeng and, and no, Odegaard on you, one page? You, you can't. You can't. Mm. As well as the kid has done, they've, they've, they've done, done it more. for Yeah, mm. they've done so much more. So mm. much more. MG, I just want to check, how much of an influence has been guys like Coach Pizzo um, Stuart Baxter, um, Coach Gavin, John, Jomo, into Steve Barker, Steve Barker, yes, um, into the sort of planting this seed in you in becoming a coach, and and also how is it going being a coach? <laughs> Look, uh, let me be honest. If 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 uh, let's say I'm 24 now, <coughs> <coughs> sure, and for half of my life, which is 12. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Yeah. That's all I did. What are, what are the eventualities of me becoming a lawyer? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to be realistic. As much as we say, ah, eh, and a lot of players back then, ah, football, young poor, eh, English, Mazile. Pulling please your dog. My guy, mm -hmm. fix your heart and, and try and Give help someone moment. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let what you went through must not happen to the next kid. So you, you, it's it's a case of I was I'm very vocal on the field, off the field I'm very quiet. What? That's a lie. Okay. I agree actually. <laughs> quiet. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. My goodness, have I, you I'm had a conversation with, with Morgan? No, once you talk to him, it's still a different story. <laughs> um, but I've, I've actually watched you a lot. Like I think I saw you at some there were some games in the Alex one time, yes. uh, the Mamani Peter games. And off season. Mm -hmm. I was just watching it from afar. Dude was standing there serious as all hell. Just, you know, like, I'm like, you're quite in a flash work. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but I, then I got a good reaction. He's actually a very quiet person because later on I stepped up to him. I was like, Ita. And he was like, cool. Until I moved on and then he was serious and quiet again. And almost like, I mean, he can't any talk attention to himself. All. But anyway, you were saying. Yeah, also that I'm not an attention seeker. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't do all of that. So, what were we talking about? Hey, I want to say coach. No, no, the coaches. The coaches. Oh, oh, oh. I was very sorry. sorry. I want Behavior. Very, on the field, very aggressive, very um, unapologetic, uh, very demanding, and very vocal. And those are the traits that you need to, to have as a human mm -hmm. being if you want to do anything that's requires team team effort, uh, team participation. Mm -hmm. and, and then all those coaches are like, and especially to my later years, Gavin was like, I'm a friend, you must start coaching now. Yeah, you are old, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, old now. Like jokingly, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. Steve Barker also, ah, my friend, uh, speak to them, maybe they listen to you, so you'll become my coach to the players on the field. and. Look, idea. the idea was brought to me, mm -hmm. and I was like, look, I have opportunity. Uh, not many people get this opportunity. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to run. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's how it happened. Okay. So, because we run out of time. Hey, Kuluma, Kuluma. Hey, dog. But it's okay. You, you, you need sorry, to. Sorry, that's yeah? why we had you. We needed you here, but we didn't have it. So now I have to jump. <laughs> there are still a lot of questions. Huh? Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Five, <laughs> I know. We all have a lot of questions. You, we need a part two, yeah? You're going to come back for a part two? I don't mind. Thank you. Cheers. Right.
Yeah. More cheese. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll make sure we bring more cheese. Um, quick question to the three of y'all before we get out of here. Mabena, we'll start with you on this mm. one. Um, your most memorable match. Which one is it? Don't give me the why, because we don't have the time. Most memorable? Mm -hmm. um, just before I started commentating, I just, have to, I just finished my trick, actually. I was in Job visiting um, my mother, mm -hmm. and Brazil were playing against South Africa. Mm -hmm. Romario and them. I remember Romario chipped Brian Beloy and, and it was Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and what you don't see and you don't notice is when we were come into the stadium, at this park stadium, they give you all these Nike packages. Mm -hmm. So everyone had one. So we all putting on these Nike, this yellow Nike stuff. This, mm -hmm. And by the time I found out, and I felt so bad, by the time I found out, I found out come out of the tunnel. Yeah. It's almost like we're playing in Brazil. Everyone's yellow and blue, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but had, 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 had a whale of a time there. And of course, seeing Brazil for the first time live, it's Brazil, bro. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and Romario and them, so yeah. yeah. All right, Mathasi? Um, There's a match, I can't remember the, the year. It must have been around 2014 or five. Maybe in Ilia. Um, Super Sport Chiefs, Wednesday night, Loftus. Uh, Coach Peter, for some reason, I think they were playing Champions League or something like that. He has rested Peter Kobadi, Ketaro Tembo, Temba Moody, um, Kapansi Beko, you know, all the Abraham Nosloman, I think, if you're still alive. He has rested all the senior players and he played some younger guys there. Mm -hmm. And these kids rock up in a full Loftus stadium. They were leading Chiefs 3 0 at after. One of the best performances I've seen in the I, I still remember as it, it happened yesterday. A mm -hmm. beautiful game of football. And, and uh, Super Sport beat Chiefs 3 1. Sure. And Chiefs were on form at that time with Coach Ted. And you know, they were, you know, the way they are now. They were like a proper football team at that time. You know, oh, and they your know. shade. Hey, do you know what I'm Now, I said it last week here. Yeah. They're like a car that has been involved in an accident. Mm. They just need an assessor to write them off. It's a hopeless situation. Yeah. yeah I <laughs> <laughs> Deep yeah, and out, yeah. right? <laughs> what about go at the radio, they're going now, they will probably not call a paper top it. Okay, we're not going to stay there. Morgan, <laughs> what's yours? I have so many. I think I can't remember the year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Egypt versus South Africa. Uh -huh. ah, I don't know if you remember the first the first time we've beat. Beat was the coach. We beat oh. them one zero. Oh yes. And it it? In, yeah. 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 Uh, I. Oh, what a blind of a game I had, I, if I must say so myself. Yeah. Um, I even got Benny calling me, Kilo calling me, oh. and mm. trying to organize me a trial at when Kachiso uh, Tehashi was at Crystal Palace. Palace yes. And they actually made it happen. Um, sure. So for me, that was an eye opener and like, what? I can actually do this? and. I just, I just enjoyed that. And it was also a memorable one because it's the first time South Africa's actually beaten mm. Mm. Egypt and how Pizzo was stressing that mm. week. Mm. You know, Pizzo is, is such a, 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 a very intelligent, but Kuku also, eh? That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He Everybody, told yeah. us the team that's going to play, mm. the players on the bench, and the players that were not part of the team. Yeah. Sure names, positions, yes. where they play, mm -hmm. height. Mm -hmm. He could have probably also told us the weight, knowing him. Mm -hmm. But that's how well we studied that team. So yeah, for me, that was the most memorable one. Do you do the same thing to your young players, by the way? Hey, these ones, they've got Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything is Googleable these days. Everything yeah. is Googleable, yeah. <laughs> okay, it makes it a bit easier. Well, that's how we wrap up the Arena Sports Show. We'll do a part two soon where we bring Morgan back. And, of course, we'll have double the cheese as per request. But from us, it is cheers. Goodbye.